This video is a brief introduction to light. So light belongs to a family of waves called electromagnetic. And the list of all the waves that are electromagnetic is called the electromagnetic spectrum. One small section of that spectrum we can see as visible light. But there's a whole other part to it. There are much bigger wavelengths, much smaller wavelengths, other frequencies of possible electromagnetic waves. It's been a fascination of physicists for a long time trying to measure the speed of light and therefore the speed of electromagnetic waves. So we happen to know that all electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed. So if we measured the speed of light, we would have found the speed of a whole bunch of waves. One of the first ways um, to measure the speed of light came from Galileo. Before Galileo, people thought that light traveled instantaneously from one place to another, and Galileo made the first serious attempt to measure light. He had someone stand on a hilltop, a very far distance from him, and his friend would open um, the shutter on a lantern, and so the light would come out. And when Galileo saw the light, he would open the shutter on his lantern, and the friend would measure the time it took between when he opened his shutter and then he saw the light from Galileo, Galileo's lamp. But Galileo just ended up measuring human reaction time because humans react very slowly compared to the speed of light. Later, a Danish astronomer named Ole Romer, who had a rather appropriate name because he watched planets that roam around the sky, um, tried to figure out the speed of light based on one of the moons of Jupiter. So he predicted that at a certain point you would see one of Jupiter's moons a little later than expected, if we knew how fast that moon rotated around. You would see it a little later than expected because it would take light time to travel to the Earth. And the way he made that prediction was, since we knew the Earth was moving around the Sun, at some point the Earth was further back from Jupiter, and at another point the Earth was closer to Jupiter. And so he figured that this distance here would cause some delay in light, making it from Jupiter to Earth. And his prediction turned out to be true. In fact, Io showed up 10 minutes late in the sky on November 9th, 1676. In the late 1800s, a guy named uh, Albert Michelson, who was an American physicist, used rotating mirrors and then a mirror really, really far away to figure out the speed of light. Um, he would try to get the mirrors to spin in just such a way that it would shoot the light into a little scope that he could look at. Sorry, the scope was actually over here near his eye. So this would be the light source in the scope. And if he got that rate of spinning just right, he could figure out, knowing the angle between this mirror over here and the mirror on the hill, he could figure out exactly how fast that light had to be traveling for the mirror to be spinning at a certain speed. I've actually repeated this experiment in one of my college physics classes, so I've done what's called the Michelson interferometry experiment. And he made one of the uh, most precise measurements of the speed of light, and we still use a number very close to the one Michelson came up with for the speed of light. The speed of light in a vacuum it's given to be 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Um, a better way to write this, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second in a vacuum. Light actually has a different speed in different media, but in a vacuum, light travels at this speed, and we use that as the general speed of light. So if somebody asks you what the speed of light is, it's 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And it's close enough to the speed of light in air that we also use it for that. Because different materials have different speeds of light, we have a standard way of comparing them it's called the index of refraction. It's used to compare the speeds of light in materials that are not vacuums. So compare any material to a vacuum. For any given material, the speed is constant. So if you know the speed of light, say, in water or in styrofoam or whatever, the speed of light is constant in that material. So anytime you measure the speed of light in that material, it should always be the same. We 
compare the speed of light and material using an index of refraction, which is the variable n. And the way this works is index of refraction equals the speed of light in a vacuum, speed in vacuum, divided by the speed in a given material, speed in material. And the variables we use there, speed of light in a vacuum is C, and that's um, a standard physical constant. So just like everybody knows what you mean when you say pi, you mean 3.14 and so on. Any physicist, if you say C, will know you mean 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's the physical constant that we use. So it's... C, the speed of light in a vacuum, divided by V, the speed of light in a material. A pretty typical one that comes up is speed of light in water. Um, a lot of experiments are done shining light through water. And so let's do that calculation real fast. Find the index of refraction of water. So if I want the index of refraction of water, remember that N, the index of refraction, equals C over V. And again, that's just comparing the speed of light in a given material to the one in a vacuum. So n equals 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divided by the speed of light in water, which I've written here, 2.25 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And if you do that, the index of refraction of water is 1.33. An index of refraction is a unitless number. It's just 1.33. And this is actually one that I do kind of carry around in my head, um, the index of refraction of water comes up a lot. The index of refraction of air is 1.01 .01, or about 1. Uh, so what, light travels a little slower in air than a vacuum and a lot slower in water. So you consider n is kind of telling you how slow light travels through a medium as compared to a vacuum. This week I'm going to give you an experiment to do at home where you'll actually get to measure the speed of light with marshmallows. So you won't be using a lantern on a hill or a Michelson interferometry mirror, you'll use marshmallows. And I'll explain this and walk you through it, but know that you're going to get to measure the speed of light using marshmallows. If you took my CP class, you've done this before, but it's so cool that it's worth doing again.